What's up, guys? James Carter TV and Rejoice Tennessee Titans fans because Ken Wisenhunt, former head coach of the Tennessee Titans, has been fired as the head coach or of the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, I should say. And these are glorious days indeed. Finally, we no longer have to put up with this guy and his absolute systematic de-evolution and just I mean, destruction of this football team. I mean, honestly, this was a team that was notorious for being a 500 team. 8-8, eight 7-9, and 6-10 eight, and ten, maybe a couple times. Could go 9-7, and seven, could go 10-6, and six, could have some nice playoff years. But they'd be around this 500 thing every year. I mean, every now and then you could see a 13-3. and three. You could also see a 4-12. and 12. But Ken Wisenhunt comes along and he systematically destroys and destructs that model, which really is disappointing. That model was disappointing. But now you come in and you say, no, you're not going to be 500. You're going to be habitually one of the worst teams in the NFL. I'm going to bring you from the Rams and and maybe not the Rams, but I'm going to bring you from the Titans and uh, mm, Texans area. Who else is like in that mediocre range all the time? The New York Giants, although they can win Super Bowls and they show them that ability, but they're always in that mediocre range. That range of mediocre teams. I'm going to take you from that, and I'm just going to bring you down to one of the worst teams in the NFL. And that is something that he systematically did, and it's absolutely preposterous. 3-20 and 20 in his tenure of the Tennessee Titans head coach, the set tied for the second worst I've ever seen, and statistically in the post-merger era, era, except for some guy, McHale, some guy that goes for a Tampa Bay, started off 0-26. I don't know how that happened. I need to go back to the history books to see how he lasted that long. But regardless of that situation, Ken Wisdom is gone and good. And now this presents something I think is going to be very, very interesting. This team can still make the playoffs. It's unbelievable. It's so unbelievably sacrilegious and blasphemous it's unbelievable this is coming out of my mouth, but we're talking about a Tennessee Titans team that is one and a half games away from the division lead. I mean, this is absolutely preposterous, but that is how bad the AFC South is. It's the worst division in NFL history. And you look at a Tennessee Titans team that has nine games coming up. If Mike Malarkey can string together a couple wins, we're talking about a team competing for the AFC South. I mean, the Colts, their schedule is really tough upcoming. The Jaguars, I don't trust. The Texans, I think they may lose out. Honestly, this is a Tennessee Titans team that can still win the division. Now, I'm not going to pick them to do that because I need to see more improvement. But they will be improved. I mean, with Ken Wilson and I thought they'd win one more game this season. With Mike Malarkey, I say three. I say four and 12. I say that... That's definitely not going to be uh, good enough to make the playoffs, even in the AFC South. But I say that's improvement. I say don't hire him as the full-on head coach, as the permit head coach. I say don't do that. I say find a new guy, a better guy. I say fire Russ and Webster, the GM. And if you watch the press conference with Amy Adams Strunk, and uh, actually she wasn't there, but with Steve Underwood speaking on the behalf of Amy Adams Strunk, the uh, controlling owner for the Tennessee Titans, you could see that there are some ripples between the general manager, Russell Webster, and ownership. So that'll be interesting to see how that develops. I want him gone. I want uh, several changes on this ba- on this football team. And, you know, the interesting thing is a lot of Tennessee Titans fans wanted to really criticize the ownership and, and still do, and I don't get it. I really don't care that these people are not in Tennessee. I I don't give a shit. I think if these guys can just hire the right guys... I don't, I don't care if they never come back again. Uh, you hire the right guys and you leave. I think that's a fine owner. I don't think your owner has to do more than that. If your owner hires the right president, the president hires the right GM, the GM hires the right coach, you should never hear from the owner again until things, ar- uh, uh, th- until things go wrong and problems arise. 
So I have no problem that the, that they don't go, that they don't live in Tennessee, but they go to every game. They're vocal. I mean, they're not really vocal, but they're vocal now. They, they've shown that they're caring. I have no problems with this ownership. I think Tennessee Titans fans need to stop talking about this ownership as being such a bad thing for this football team. I think they're just fine because, I mean, they show today they're watching, they're caring. In fact, I don't think they could have handled this better. They've been sitting by, they've been paying attention, they've been quiet because coming out and saying we're disappointed, that can cause a lot of desperation and a lot of uh, it can cause the players to stop caring or trying. So it could just cause problems. So sit back, wait, wait, no warning, come in, hey, you're fired, and then leave. I think that's fine. I don't see I don't see anything wrong with the way that ownership handled this situation. But hey, you know, this is overall a net positive for the Tennessee Titans. And that, and there are idiots out there. I mean, just absolute morons, just fools, punks, and morons that are out here saying this was a stupid move. This is the dumbest thing, honestly, I've ever heard. I, I've never heard of anything worse than this. And it's because people are so uneducated and so unwilling to educate themselves about this Tennessee Titans team. And I get it. You know, you've never seen a Tennessee Titans game uh, within the past five years. So you don't understand what's going on in this football team. You look at week one and you look at the highlights and you say, Wow, Mariota, good. Ken Wizenhut doing good job. But if you've been watching since then, if you've watched any of this team since then, you realize that this team has been absolutely awful, especially offensively, which is where Ken Wizenhut resides. Over the past three games, they've given up, to, uh, oh, they've scored point totals of 6, 7, 10, 13. This is bad offense and this is what this guy talks about him being up and or being the you know master of the offensive coordinator the head coach he is in control of this offense the offense is the worst in the NFL over the past four weeks it's the worst and will it stall the growth of Marcus Mariota I don't buy that the Oakland Raiders fired Dennis Allen they fired uh, Tony Sperano, and they hired Jack Del Rio. Uh, Derek Carr has had three head coaches in a year and a half, and he's doing pretty good. If the if the quarterback is pretty good, he'll be able to do well even when head coaches are spinning around because Derek Carr, Dennis Allen, uh, Dennis Allen, uh, Tony Sperano, and J- Jack Del Rio, well, and no, none of which by the way, are very potent offensively. I don't think Jack Del Rio is an offensive specialist at all. He's a defensive guy. Tony Sperano is okay offensively, but you don't expect much from him. And Dennis Allen is just a joke. And despite this, the Derek Carr is still doing pretty well. So I don't want to hear about, well, this is going to cause instability. Quarterbacks need stability. I don't want to hear. I think you can do well. If you're good, you'll do well regardless. This is what I believe. And more importantly, this will allow Marcus Moriota to develop. I think he's going to be even better because of this change. Because now you have a guy that will be able to use, or hopefully, in Mike Malarkey, who will be able to use the offensive weapons the way they're supposed to be used. I, I cannot believe that the Tennessee Titans have yet to run a bubble screen for Doriel Green Beckham. I can't believe it. I This is the, one of the most uh, sacrilegious things I've ever heard of. Doriel Green Beckham at Missouri would run bubble screens and he would run for 40 yards. I mean, th- th- they had a staple offense throwing the ball to Doria Beckham on these slants, on these bubble screens, on these deep balls. He- he's not just a deep ball threat. You could throw a bubble screen to him and he can make people miss. I know he's put on muscle mass and size since then, but he can still do that because I'm sorry. Every time I've seen Doria Green Beckham with the ball in his hands, this guy is quick, especially for his size. This is a weapon. You have to get the ball in his hands. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if he only knows how to run the nine route, uh, maybe the three route or the one route. You got to throw him the ball. You got to find ways to get him the ball. They're, they're not running bubble screens. They should be running bubble screens to these wide receivers. You have to be running a quick passing game scheme when you have the offensive line that the Tennessee Titans have. But anyway, enough intricities. The point is this. Tennessee Titans have fired Ken Wisenhunt. Good. Now let's look at quickly some head coaching possible candidates. And this is my list. 
Number one, I want Hugh Jackson. This is a guy that was a one-year head coach for the Oakland Raiders, was fired just because they were, you know, Al Davis died and Mark Davis came in and he kind of wanted his own guy and they hired Reggie McKenzie who wanted his own guy and they were upset at him trading a first-round pick for Carson Palmer, which, hey, Carson Palmer looks pretty good today. So, hey, I can even defend that decision. So, Hugh Jackson is someone I really want. I'm looking at some college coaches. Uh, Brian Kelly. David Shaw, Kevin Sumlin. I think they, these guys could come in here and, and create a winning culture for this football team. Adam Gase, the offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears, I think he could come in and really do a lot of things with Marcus Marty on this offense. Now, one name that keeps being thrown out that I'm just not a big fan of is Josh McDaniels. I think in his head coaching time with Denver Broncos, he showed he's just not really able to really be a head coach of a football team. I think he can be a good offensive coordinator. I think he has problems relating to players, especially on the defensive side of the football. You have to be a, a head coach for everybody, not just the offense. So I think he has a lot of problems with that. I think that he's kind of just a prick, and um, I don't think he's a very good head coach. I, I think he, he went to like St. Louis, and, and he was offensive coordinator for them, and he was absolutely awful. And you can say, well, the Rams didn't have much talent. The Rams had... At this point, Sam Bradford, Steven Jackson, and Brandon Lloyd. I wish we had those players in their primes now. That was in their primes. So right now we have, what, Mariota, Antonio Andrews, and Kendall Wright. So you can make an argument that trio he had in St. Louis was better than the trio we have now. So if he couldn't elevate those guys, how is he going to come here and elevate these guys? I don't want anything to do with Josh McDaniels. But there's plenty of head coaching candidates. We'll talk about them extensively throughout this season, throughout the off season. One name I keep hearing, though, Jim Schwartz, the former uh, head coach of the Detroit Lions. No, 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 and no. The Detroit Lions, Matt Stafford, and Damu Kong Su, Calvin Johnson, and he couldn't elevate them past 10 and 6 once. So, how the hell is he going to come here and elevate Mariota, Kendall Wright? He, he's not going to he's not going to lift these guys to a perennial playoff team. He's had his shot, and he blew it. Now, I think He's okay. You know, he could bring us to like an 8-8 eight and eight football team. But I want someone with a little more upside than Jim Schwartz. And I think we've seen everything Jim Schwartz has to offer up to this point. So, there you go. There's uh, the news today. Ken Wittenhan fired. What are your thoughts on this? Comment down below. And until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.